continue our explanation about the new strategy in China. One, they facing the challenge of overproduction and also the financial crisis. And uh, one may talk about the new strategy. We must know that there is uh, some kind of basic uh, constraints in China. The first is that and China is uh, the biggest population country. Every year, there is new uh, labor. The total amount is more than 10 million. I mean, every year there will be a more than 10 million new labor force increased because the population size is much bigger. And then total amount of the labor force in China is 840 million. It's much, much bigger than the total amount of the labor force in all developed countries. Means that all Western countries put all of this labor force together is smaller than the labor force in China. So even in these Western countries, no matter whatever ism they claim, they have a very severe problems of unemployment. And unemployment always turn into the social conflicts. So when China want to do the readjustment, the first concern is how to deal with the employment issue. If the readjustment means that large number of the people lose job, become the unemployment. That means that the state, the society cannot maintain stability. The instable, instable, the social conflicts must take place. So if you have large number of people out of job, there will be a big disaster. So that is a need to be very careful to think about. So it doesn't mean that China directly to close down these factories, to reduce the industrial capacities, and then everything will be good. No, that will be big institutional cost. So that is why just now when I talk about the governments adopt the policy as going short, as a private form, I give some negative comments. And if you do want to change, you need to have a well preparation. That is a, what is a new strategy? What is a new industry? What is the room for contain this uh, labor force? Originally, China is a kind of dual system, rural and urban. Originally, we said that urban is a capital pool, rural is a labor pool. When the crisis happen, it's always happened in the capital pool. Means that the crisis taking place in urban area. So when urban take out, lay off its laborers, if they can come back to the countryside, to rural area, means that rural is a labor pool, can maintain these uh, surplus laborers. But if you destroy the countryside, mm -hmm, that we nowhere to give yourself landing. So originally, when China have a several times crisis in the procedure of industrialization, every time, if they can make the soft landing in countryside, means that the industry in the urban area still can be maintained. So you you can you can be pass the this uh, this uh, crisis and then going to recover. But during the, 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 the first decade of 21st century, and uh, in name of uh, new countries at construction, a lot of natural resources have been occupied by the capital. And also, I mentioned that large amount of this industrial capital invested into the agriculture. They changed the agriculture as a modern agriculture means a chemicalized, machinized 
and so on and so. And then the rural area could hardly be labor pool. So that is a, a very negative phenomenon. When this time, when Chinese Central want to do the national strategy readjustment, they got to first to think about can they regenerate the rural society. So that is why I gave the explanation here to talk about the national strategy readjustment. We first need to do the two-part analysis. First, is that one belt, one road, and to build up the communication with other countries, and then to transfer this uh, so-called surplus capacity of industries, and also can help other countries to to improve their infrastructure construction. That is uh, somehow positive. You, if you are the you change your position. If you are the governments, you cannot directly do the going short to avoid the social conflicts. So that is a one truth. Another one that you need to strengthen the instruction, the, the strengthen the, the construction in countryside. So that is why there is a kind of new policy for the uh, anti poverty. Uh, for the for the anti poverty and uh, for the for the poverty re 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 reduction and also for beautiful countryside construction and then beautiful countryside construction is a kind of national strat strategy also a part of the beautiful china beautiful china means that they are trying to improve the environment and reduce the pollution that is a beautiful china it's a new picture and then inside of this uh, picture, there must be another one that is a strength, strengthen the instruction, the, the struct, construction of the countryside. So this uh, put this uh, this uh, national strategy together, you can understand what China nowadays must do. So this uh, this this is a, a, a change from the beginning of. The second uh, uh, decade of 21st century, mainly going short to adopt the measures as a private forum, to do the policy as a pro cyclical. That is uh, the beginning of the, the second decade. And then the mid of second decade, they changed the national strategy to right way, going long. Mm -hmm. That is counter cyclical measures. So it's very important change. So I hope you can understand. So this one we said is a new, a, a new adjustment. So from pro capital to pro people and to pro poor. That is a policy system for the ecological civilization construction in China. So that is because of the bound burden of safety problems under limited resources constraint and unlimited population. That is a basic contradiction in developing country. Okay, and uh, so the second I gave the, 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 the policies step by step from the uh, uh, 2002 they gave the new policy to have the comprehensive adjustments of the urban and rural. And then 2003, they raised up a new concept that is scientific development, the, the scientific view of development. And then 2004, the harmony society means that they pay attention to the social construction, not only economic construction. So that is started from 2004. And then 2005, there's a new construction project. It's a socialist countryside construction. And large number of the investments for 
infrastructure construction in countryside. And then, 2006, they have a new concept raised up by central governments that is a multi-function agriculture is modernization. Originally, they believe in modernization, agricultural modernization means that machinery, means chemical, chemical agriculture. So they just use the industrial uh, concept to reform the agriculture. That is modernization. But from 2006, they changed the idea. They emphasized the multifunction agriculture, including of the cultural, including of historical heritage, including of education, including of this uh, uh, environmental protection, and uh, uh, tourism, and uh, whatever. So most of these functions are really don't, they don't aware. But now they said it's a multifunction agriculture, it's modernization. So that is uh, the agriculture development strategy changed since the year 2005, 2006. New countryside construction means that strengthen their investments, large number of investments into the infrastructure construction, into the countryside, into the every village, even no return. And then 2006, they changed their concept of the modernization of agriculture. And then 2007, ecological civilization as a concept raised up, but not as a strategy. Concept means that they need first to understand, to have awareness, what is ecological, what is the civilization. Put these two concepts together, they are trying to think that they will have a new thinking new thought about development. And then 2008, they are trying to have a kind of uh, environment friendly and the resources saving agriculture by macro readjustment. And then 2009, they raised up the concept of the inclusive and sustainable development. And 2012, raised up the concept of beautiful China. 2013, raised up the tonization as a strategy. Few people understand what is tonization. But it's quite different of urbanization. Because the Chinese scholar, they don't have such kind of word. They, don't, they only know what is town, what is a city. But when they talk about ton the, the tonization, they said it's uh, not English. English only have urbanization. So we need to create a new word to describe what is a Chinese strategy. Since that year, Chinese strategy is not exactly to accelerate urbanization. The, the politician gave a speaking to talk about what is tonization. They said China did uh, does want to accelerate urbanization. But the Chinese urbanization must be implemented by townization. So if you only have the concept of urbanization, you cannot translate. Think about this a new strategy. Because that in China, we have the mega city means that more than million population, the mega city, 40s. We have a uh, big cities, that's 600. But we also have a uh, 3,000 central town of the counties. We also have a uh, 30,000 construction town. These uh, central town and the construction town in countryside, not in urban area. So this uh, central town and the construction town can be the center uh -huh, to accelerate the urban, uh, no, the, the, the rural, small and mid-sized enterprises to settle, to allocate it in the construction town and the center town of the counties. Means that the local can be developed by central town construction and small mid-sized enterprises. One thing you must pay attention to. 
employment for the small and mid-sized enterprises six times bigger than big firm. So this a transnational company or big company, they can take some people to be the employees, but not more. If you do want your people to have the cash job, you need to develop small size and mid size enterprises. But small size, mid size enterprises cannot set up in the big cities because too much high cost. The small city, the county town, and the construction town applied, you develop the small and the mid sized enterprises, absorb more laborers to have a job. That is why China emphasized townization, not urbanization. This is a very important concept to understand the Chinese strategy. So a lot of foreign scholars, when they do their studies, they pay attention to urbanization. So this is roughly to use the data, not detailed to do the study. That is a big problem. So they cannot understand what is the strategy in China. Townization is different with urbanization. So that is one. And then from that time, they also emphasize, so what is Liu Zhu Xiang Chou means that you have some feelings towards your home village. Most, I, say, I, I can say more than 90% of the urban population originally from the countryside. So this generation or older generation all come from the countryside. They have their memory of their home village. So how to maintain such kind of feelings? Not just by you have some, some memory. You need to do something to maintain your village as a kind of beautiful village. You have a clean water, you have a clean air, you have a good environment, you have a good quality of food. That is uh, your feelings. So your feelings must have a base. This base means that you need to do something, do some effort in your home village. So that is also to strengthen the rural construction. And then, when you have the rural construction, you need to have a good governance. The government, almost all the governments in the world, all want to raise up the government's goodwill. But how to make government goodwill to be the government's good performance? That is the question. So to be or not to be, that is the question. To change the government goodwill into the government, government good performance, that's also the question. That's question also key question. Mm -hmm. By free election, let me tell you, China started free election in countryside since the year 1988 up to now. We have almost 30 years, 29 years free election in countryside. 80% failed. Doesn't mean that you have a free election, you can be have a democratic system in the countryside. No. Traditional rural society it will be very hard to accept this modern political regime from Western society, especially in these uh, traditional oriental countries. So even we have the free election implemented in the countryside. But nowadays, more than 80% of the countryside cannot have good government view to good government performance to set up the good governance. The governance need to have a kind of mutual, mutual actions, interactions from the village elites to village mass people. How can you implement? still be the problem. So nowadays we also need to have a lot of uh, grassroots organization construction, cooperatives, aging associations, female associations. We, we need to have a lot of work in the countryside to maintain the beautiful village, to maintain your good feeling, feelings 
in the village. So that is a、uh, very important. So we said the new countryside governance is a、uh, also a part of the new strategy. In 2015, the Chinese Central emphasized the deepen your reform for the civilization of ecology. Ecology, which means ecological civilization also need deepen your reform. So these are systematic、uh, policies, one by another, one followed another, year by year, make the central policy makers gradually understand what they should do, not suddenly, not by some high levels design, and they can again the the outcomes of the reform. These are the propaganda. Uh, ideological propaganda, but indeed, they have a, a gradually to facing the challenge one by another, and then have a, the the measures one by another. So that is a very cautious to have your policy in such kind of big country because your difficulties is very comprehensive, very complicated. So that is why I'm emphasize this.、Uh, These are policies one by another raised up, and then the new one is a twenty fifteen. The UN have a the World uh, 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 Poverty Reduction、uh, Summit in China, and Chinese governments announced twenty twenty year twenty twenty, China will have a no poor people. Means eliminate all the poor. In China, that means what? Means originally, China used 15 years or 16 years since the year 1998 to set up rebalance of the regional difference and rural-urban difference. Means a large amount investments into the inland China into the countryside. So, the we originally have a three gap, regional gap. Means the coastal and the inland. Coastal go, grow up very very fast, and the inland still backward. And then urban, rural gap. Urban income is very high, and the rural income very low. Now we have、uh, the the third gap is that rich and the poor. You cannot reduce the gap of rich and poor in the whole world because the whole world, the gap of the rich and the poor enlarged. That because of financial capital error,、hmm, the rich people take more money more easy, and the low level people, low income people, cannot use the financial capital as a tool to invest, then then to take these、uh, returns. So the low le- low income level, the mass people, cannot catch the global financialization's return. That means the gap between rich and the poor larger and larger. So any country would wouldn't to give the permission, we can reduce the gap between rich and the poor. But China can announced we eliminate the poor people's not 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 the we can re- eliminate the poverty means that. All the poor people can at least have the basic income to survive from the poverty. So that is a they said a new new national strategy as a goal. So nowadays we have a enter the 2017. There's only three years left. So if you go to China down to the local, you can find almost every local governments. Do their efforts in the countryside, one household by another household, to make the target: which households, which people is poor, and then help this one to make the the the, the program. Which program apply to this household? How can make this household this household has have the the chance to have the cash income? They have done a lot of efforts, so we can see that three years later. This national strategy goal can be 
carried out or not. So they have a many uh, different uh, uh, policies focus on different problem. Maybe they can they can succeed. So here we can see that originally China was blocked by this military force. It's uh, caused by the Cold War and the post Cold War. It still be work to block. Now China want to break through by what? Certainly cannot break through by the ocean strategy. But can be by can be big breakthrough can can break through by continental strategy going west from the land, not from the sea. The sea that is blocked. Land also, but here large area. Originally as a Russia and Mongolia and the, and the, originally these countries are the Rus Russian uh, uh, federal. Uh, no, it's a yeah, it's a uh, federal. It's a, uh, uh, so the China can go pass on Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and uh, and then or maybe to Russia and then to have uh, oil and uh, gas and uh, also can make the transportation. Nowadays, they have uh, implemented some transportation from Xi'an or Chongqing directly to the to West Europe, and uh, it's a uh, um, more uh, short time, just uh, fourteen days, less than fifteen days. But if you go into the ocean transportation, that will be thirty days, double. So the transportation by by land bridge, it's uh, more faster. So now they not only from Xi'an but also from Chongqing, from Liangang, and uh, many a uh, 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 port set up the the land bridge, join the land bridge. So here, this one is uh, made by Western people, so not so clear. But if you have uh, another picture uh, made by uh, uh, drawn by Chinese. There will be a network in southeast China, uh, uh, in southeast uh, uh, peninsula, and in in mid south peninsula, and then and South Asia. There are several uh, uh, land uh, uh, railway network now has linked with the railway network of mainland China. So there will be some. Uh, uh, land bridge start from Hong Kong, but nowadays because Hong Kong have some some kind of contradiction, so it's a uh, the pro project blocked. But if the project can be implemented from Hong Kong to to the to the uh, 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 South Asia, even to the West Asia, even to the Middle Europe, that will be a, the the good land bridge here to Europe. Now north, they have set up the three land bridge. The south, they want to set up the land bridge from Hong Kong and then cover the South Asia and then to the to Europe, and then from the Europe also from the West Asia they can down to the Africa. So these are big project, all are in design. So the land bridge is a part of the continental strategy. To solve the problems of the uh, 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 of the uh, so-called the the block, so this means that China can break through by this land bridge construction, and then also can benefit this uh, these border countries and also the countries along the land bridge. So that is a way. Here, why that is a the. Uh, one belt, uh, uh, one road here going to the uh, sea uh, communi uh, communication or transportation somehow not so easy because here is here. Look, many U.S. military base in the Middle East control. 
the oil and the gas and the raw materials. Look at all of this uh, American military base here, this area. And this area and also regional conflicts, very tension relation here. It's because, not because of who is good, who is bad. It's because of the rich resources. So the one belt, one road have to avoid the conflicts. So there's a no road here. No, even no shaping uh, uh, line, no road, no construction here. This is because here, look. So here is a very dangerous area. That is a one belt, one road need to avoid this uh, traditional Cold War strategy. That is a Cold War strategy means that large number of the military base allocated in this, in this area. So you put these uh, three pictures together, you can see that originally China blocked by this uh, uh, big brother. And then China got to break through. Break through only can go this way. So that is a land bridge. Originally land bridge here. And then second land bridge here. And then third land bridge must be here. But nowadays there are somehow this uh, soft power and smart power still be play the trick in these areas and also in Myanmar, in, in, in Thailand and so on and so that means that the third land bridge is not so easy. But it benefits almost all the countries along the third land bridge. So here, let me just uh, stop second make you to have uh, your own uh, thought. You can think about it's good or not. Maybe it's not good for you. Maybe it's good for you. I don't want to give you a conclusion. I think that you'd better think about this one by yourself. Okay, so we go to the next. One may talk about the beautiful China. Beautiful China means that the uh, cultural uh, uh, self-confidence uh, and also means self-awareness above the cosmology I mean because the cosmology is not exactly from the coastal uh, from oriental China this uh, cosmology now utilized by post-Cold War ideology so you need to have a kind of cultural regeneration. And then by the cultural regeneration, we can have awareness. We can have a self identifications So that is a very important. So when we talk about amazing China, beautiful China, we must understand, so set up the cultural regeneration, that it's need to do the reflection of developmentalism. And that, that is uh, exactly caused by colonization and capitalization. So developmentalism is uh, very popular now in almost all developing countries. But when we talk about the 10 times 10 crisis in China, we have given the critiques, we have to give the crit critical thoughts about what is development. So we need to take into the consideration what is the cost. So we, need, we may first know uh, colonization turned into Eurocentric modernization with more cost transferring to poor South countries. That is the problems originally come from, come from cost transferring. And then we also need to understand the overproduction plus overcompetition means the crisis of West World War II. That is in 1930s to 1940s. Means even they have a colonization, even they occupied these uh, 
developing, developing countries, they cannot avoid the contradiction of economic area turn to the political area. From the economic system turn to the political regime. So if you talk about liberalism, you need to know the Second World War happened in these uh, Western countries. And the Western countries believe that they are liberalist country. The Second World War not in other area. Certainly that if you 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 think about Japanese attack China, that is uh, earlier than the Second World War. And then Japanese attack China is uh, between two countries, not worldwide uh, fighting. So until uh, 1937-1941, when European countries, most of these European countries, all involved of the war, that is Second World War. So we 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 can think about this uh, this uh, big cost, it's human disaster, caused by what? By this uh, Eurocentric thought, by this uh, philosophy, by these uh, cosmologies, by these uh, ideologies. Mm -hmm. Nobody can forgive that. Nobody can for forget that. So then, when the Second World War finished, when the second overproduction happened in Western countries, they, ha they need to transfer out their big surplus of industries. And then, Combining the developmentalism, transfer to developing countries. So make developing countries one hand to take their industries, labor-intensive, low levels industries. Another side, take their soft power, that is a developmentalism. And then China is also inside. It means that China is the same as other developing countries. Belief developmentalism. Belief globalism. Globalization. Belief liberalism. Belief marketizations. All of these are Eurocentric ideologies as a soft power taken by China as other countries. The same. It's because China is a big country. They cannot implement as a whole faster. So they got slowed down and then make this a big population country, big continental country, do have the time. Because the, the, the space bigger, the room is bigger. So they can use a big room to turn, to, to exchange to the time. Mm -hmm. So 空间换时间 means that the room can change the time. So not like small country, very faster very fast to implement and then facing the bad outcome. China ha did have a lot of uh, bad outcomes, very negative, but it's because it's a big country. So they can be a little bit changed and then to reduce the cost. So that is uh, what we need to understand. <coughs> and when we have this, uh, this uh, thought, I did have a chance to meet this uh, senior researcher. Here is a uh, Sami Amin, it's uh, John Cobb. This uh, senior person all have a very deep thought. They have a very, very, uh, how to say, the wise uh, thought. They give me a lot of help. And also, led by Hong Kong friend, gave me a chance to go abroad to meet a lot of countries, scholars, and also common peoples, to learn from them. And then, by these learnings, as international learning, I think that we can, we can carry out self-reflection. We can rethinking what we have, and what we are going to have. And then, also, we learn from our old generation scholars, all these, uh, these, uh, these uh, senior scholars in front of us, I learned 
we also learn from this uh, 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 senior person like Liang Shumin, Yan Yang Chu, and Tao Xingzhi, and so on and so on, Huang Yanpei, Lu Zuofu, uh, even Zhang Jian, uh, a hundred years ago. So these are, these are 100 years, we have uh, so many uh, these are very uh, outstanding scholars, outstanding people, they carried out a lot of local enterprises. They also have a good performance, and they also have a, a lot of lessons. So we take these uh, performance lessons as a heritage, as a historical heritage, also very benefits our thought, our discussions. So by most of these, uh, these uh, people, internal and external, inside China and outside China, we have a kind of new thought to instruct our movements and to move, move going forward. So this, uh, when we have a discussion, we need to have a theoretical studies to do the de deconstruction of Eurocentric discourses. That is why we talk about this uh, crisis and talk about the China new strategy. We can have our more detailed an an uh, analysis and explanations. Now, when we talk about the change, we must know what is the stra strategy based on the structure. What is the structure in China indeed? We said it's a twin Egyptian pyramid. This a pyramid means economic pyramid and social pyramid. What is that? Economically speaking, why the China issued its large liquidity, least a big, big number of the currencies, but up to now, haven't have the collapse. It's the biggest number of the world, I mean financial capital in China. It's because China haven't finished the monetization and capitalization. This uh, paper money in printed out. This uh, currency issued for what? For you can inside China domestically to monetize your raw materials, your natural properties. Here we have a physical assets, natural properties. Means the physical properties. Five hundred trillions, and the land. Only land, uh huh. Both mountain land and uh, terrain land, is a uh, two hundred trillion. Not totally monetized. A lot of natural resources cannot cannot be buy sell. So if these uh, natural resources can be sell and can be buy, people need a large number of the currency. So that is why China even enlarged their currency number, but up to now not have so worse situation. Similar as 1949, when China, I mean Communist China just founded, they also have a large number of these paper currencies cannot be implemented by this business. But who take this paper currency? Peasants, because peasants want to buy land, so they save this uh, paper currency as a property. When they want to use it to buy land, they can use. So when the central governments unified the whole country, started to print this uh, paper money, 70% taken by the peasants, by the rural society, and then reduce the inflation. Originally, the paper money printed out too much, must be turned to the inflation. But how does new China decrease the inflation by peasants, by monetization? So next time we can see that we have 500 trillion physical property properties, all need monetization. So even we have a 180 trillion financial assets it cannot be match this uh, big number of natural resources and the physical 
assets. And here, yeah, China did have a big debt, but debt also can be the assets. Debt can be the assets because of if you print your your currency and then you buy your debt, your debt can be the assets. Similar as a American, but American did it, and then to give this a market to other countries, you need to use your current account surplus to buy American debt. Now China started to make the Chinese the debt to be into the to put into the interna international markets started, but it's a very small number. But anyway, if if you compare the physical assets and the financial assets and the debt assets, you can see that debt assets are smaller and the financial assets also smaller. So the physical assets is bigger. So this still be stabilized. Economic structure, but if you go to the Western countries, that's upside down. The financial assets is much bigger, and then the all almost all of these physical assets all monetized, so they don't have the room. But China still have a big room for absorb these financial assets. That is why dollar system, euro system, all are very urgent to want China to open. You open your financial market, give this room to us. That is also the 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 reason of the Russian collapse. It's because Russian open much much earlier than China, and then large number of these foreign capital flow in, monetize their natural resources, and then take large return and back. So 1990s, that is the Western countries develop more faster than any others. That's because of big number of natural resources controlled by this uh, foreign capital, by this uh, hard currency. That is why Soviet Union collapsed and then West countries win. That you can understand. So that is China have a such kind of pyramid means that Chinese use their own paper currency. It's useless if you have a uh, no sovereignty independence. But if you control your sovereignty independence. The paper currency is uh, valuable because it can monetize. Close door when you finish your monetization, and then also you when you have a monetization, you set up a lot of forms, and then put these forms into the stock markets means a publication, and then you publish. But publications and then means that you need a lot of investments to capitalize. So when you finish capitalization, you can open, because we have finished all these uh, benefits, these uh, returns taken by our own capital, or by the country, or by the people. But anyway, that is by Chinese, not by foreigners. When you finish that, you can open, and then we join competition. We join the world, compete worsen to see which one is more worsening. That is a、uh, negative enough. It's bad enough, but up to now, that is why China still can have some readjustments strategically. It's because of the different the system. So a lot of uh, uh, foreign scholars criticize. They don't think that China Chinese uh, uh, system is good. They think that's bad enough. It's because it's not liberalism. But you can take into your consideration. Liberalism or neoliberalism benefits any developing country. You will find some case did benefited by liberalism or neoliberalism. You can do your research. You can raise up this case. But up to now, we have done a lot of comparative studies. We cannot find any developing countries benefited by eurocentric system. That is a very cool phenomenon. Whenever you have your volume, that is your privacy. We don't want to interfere. Only one thing I'm trying to advise: going to do the comparative studies, and then you can find what is the truth. Okay, let's see another one. That is also the pyramid. This is a social structure. The lower one, 
China is a the stabilized, is a safety country, is because what? Because the low level class, low class is not poor class. Yeah, not the the propertyless. Low class is a PD bourgeois. It's a small property holders, especially in countryside. When we carried out the land reform, almost all the low levels uh, 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 class have at least a piece of land and their own house. So means that they do have small properties, and then you can enable them as a petty bourgeoisie. So. We said we have a scattered PD bourgeoisies. The total amount is 60% of the population. So if you don't rob or don't take their properties, they will be there settled. A lot of social conflicts caused by some local governments or some capital want to take their resources. If you did that, there must be social conflicts happen. And then above or from the low class, these uh, 40 years, when the central leader allow a part of people reach first, and uh, another part of people can be not rich. So there is a middle class emerging, emerged. Okay, they may like, mm, they may have some chance, or they may do something uh, 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 very profit. But anyway, up to now, we have a more than 30% of population as a middle class. The middle class, the population, two times bigger than the total middle class in US, and also two times bigger than the total middle class in Europe. So that is the biggest consumption group. Any Western country, middle class, is a kind of force to stabilize the society because they want to safety. All middle class in the world have the same purpose, maintain the safety, because they are not big, big capital. Big capital can take the venture, can take the risk, but middle class because their properties still be small compared with the bigger one. But also, they are merged from the low class, so they will be very cautious to, to deal with their small uh, properties. Not so small, but it still be small. Mm -hmm. So if they facing the challenge of financial turmoils, they will, be, they will lose a lot. So they will worry about any crisis. So they want to be the safety. So that is a middle class. And then, but in China, the middle class, the problem of middle class is that they have no such kind of ideology. Low class maybe believe socialism because they are too small, too weak. So they think that the strong country can give my social umbrella. So low class, most of them believe that we need to have a strong government, we need to have a big country. But middle class, they do have some ability to invest. They also have some chance to go abroad. So the middle class cannot be stable, stabilized. And then also they have no such kind of ideology, especially in China. The traditional ideolo ideology cannot do anything in middle class. They don't, they don't think that that is right. And then they also not believe this a Eurocentric system. So they hesitate. They're not conf confirmed who they are, where they come from, and where they are going to. So the middle class is now somehow uh, uh, it's a, a lot of uh, instability happened in the middle class. And then there's another thing I, I said, it's a fortunately, unfortunately, China have a, a big capital. 
and the big capital mainly controlled by state. So state politicized high class. What does that mean? Almost all these are big firm owned by state. Big number of the big firm controlled by state is state owned enterprises. They control more than 50% of the financial assets. More than 50%. Sometimes it's 60%, sometimes early, sometimes lower, sometimes bigger. And then they also can control more than 50% of the industrial assets. So this uh, is uh, it's, uh, big enough. Just now I said that the top five bank, except JP Morgan, four big bank, it's a state bank from China. Yes, if you calculate these uh, top hundred firms in the world, you also can find a lot of Chinese company. But if you do your research, you can find this top hundred big company. It's a, if China company listed inside, there must be state-owned enterprise. So that is a politicized. And then we have such kind of political regime, politicized, high class, ruled the middle class and the low class. So that is a capital, big capital, middle capital and small capital. That is a social structure. Uh -huh. And it, it, it does mean big class, a uh, big capital not take the surplus from lower. It's also take a large number of surplus. And then they can have a benefit. They can have a profitable. And then and this profit is in the world is high. So how to change, how to do the reform about this one and still remain the stability? That is the question. So we have a two structure. Both are very uh, useful, very effective. So what is the competitive advantage institutionally? It still be the question. When we finish our lecture, I hope that the audience can have your own thought. Think about my description. Here, for the new strategy, we need to rethinking what is agriculture. To make agriculture to be the first industry that is only caused by colonization. Only in this colonized continent, you have the first industry as agriculture. In this uh, indigenous continent, indigenous population countries like China, India. The agriculture cannot be first industry because it's a somehow it's a strong relation with the people's life, with the local environment. So we can we can say in China we said sheng huo, sheng tai, sheng chan, means a san sheng nong ye, that's Chinese. But in English we said the traditional agriculture is not exactly for economic gain. It's for life, for family survive, and also for the village environment protection. So you cannot directly to name such kind of agriculture, multifunctional agriculture into the first industry. So I said, because they, they, they made this a colonized continental agriculture as a, for, as a first industry, and then they can have a, the agriculture uh, second, uh, point, uh, 2.0 version, means that to use the industry, industries to reform the agriculture, to make agriculture become the industrialized agro agriculture. So we have a four different agriculture from agriculture 4.0 4 to agriculture uh, 1.0 to 4.0. That is a kind of uh, innovation. And then, so when they make the agriculture be the, 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 uh, the first 
uh, uh, industry means that they take large number of the of the uh, 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 of the surplus from agriculture and then set up the industries and then to use industry to in reform the agriculture and then they have a so-called agriculture 2.0 and but it's a very much dematched the resources and uh, also the environment and then they also made the peasants to be the labor and then labor marketized and then the marketized labor only have a little income and then little income cannot buy the commercial goods and then the overproduction happened so that is a capitalism and then until what until they, they change the agriculture into the 3.0 that is uh, the third version and then to make the the tertiary uh, uh, tourism and the cultural and education and whatever into the agriculture and then agriculture can be benefited by the tertiary industries so they said agriculture point three point zero version and uh, this uh, the first uh, uh, industry agriculture can be financialized that is in future markets mainly controlled by transnational company and then to make agriculture also can be the uh, uh, that is a biologicalization industry something like that means agriculture also contribute a lot the surplus to the financial markets and but generally speaking the agriculture 3.0 can be turned to the social participate ecological agriculture that is a agriculture 4.0 and then it's a strong relation with the socialization and equalization and also relation with the history and then such kind of agriculture can have a large number of the positive externalities but the 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 the, the priority no no the precondition is that you need to control your agriculture by yourself it's also very much re involve of the sovereignty independent if you don't have the natural sovereignty independent you cannot implement the agriculture 4.0 version so that is a one we talk about the um, uh, uh, amazing countryside beautiful countryside <coughs> for the whole country's uh, 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 sustainability we need to have a lot of social participation these are pictures to show that the middle class citizens and also the the the, the rural uh, elites they all joined the the rural reconstruction the rural reconstruction is a movement for the regeneration for the cultural regeneration and the cultural regeneration for self confidence so self confidence for strengthen your sovereignty independence that is a uh, the core thought of the new strategy in the second decades of the 21st century okay so i finish my lecture hope you have a more understanding more detailed understanding of the modern chinese history thank you